Limpopo Health MEC Popi Ramatuba is concerned about the increasing number of COVID-19 cases in the province. The province has seen a big increase in confirmed COVID-19 cases since the start of the second wave. It recorded, six, it's, it recorded rather 679 COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours. What does she attribute this to? She joins me now to discuss this. Many thanks for your time this afternoon, MEC. Let's start with that very question. What are we attributing uh, the spike in COVID-19 cases in a province that didn't previously have uh, as much of a problem as KZN or the Eastern Cape, for example? Uh, afternoon and, and afternoon uh, to all your viewers. And, and thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. What we can indicate as the uh, Limpopo Province uh, Department of Health is that we did anticipate it, that the interprovincial movement as a result of now festive season, you would understand that firstly Limpopo is one of those tourism uh, destination area that most of our people would like to visit during this time of the year. Secondly, we know most of our people in our province are during the course of the year in provinces like Gauteng, uh, Western Cape, uh, East, uh, KwaZulu Natal for economic opportunity. So this is the time for them to come back home, to spend time with their loved ones, uh, with their families. So now you, you, you would uh, realize that, yes, uh, because for instance, let me give an example. The other day when I was with the MEC for Community Safety and Transport, on a roadblock on N1. Uh, more than 1,900 vehicles were at some stage passing within a period of an hour. Then that tells you that these are mostly people who are visiting uh, or coming back to their homes, which is the province. And unfortunately, the, the festive season, which is the season where in most people are coming to the province, it's still the season where most of people are in a very festive mood. mood. You cannot, it's very difficult to tell them to stay at home. They are all over. If you go to Tawani Mall, for instance, Bembe District used to be the lowest, uh, one of the lowest districts in the country in terms of infection rate. But today, uh, Tula Mela Municipality, which is there in Bembe, where Tawani Mall is, it's full to capacity. There's no social distance. There's no wearing of masks. People put their masks as if they are necklace. And, and that, those are the simple uh, issues that are causing this number to go very high. Yeah, and MEC, I must just come in there because you raise some very important points in terms of uh, people not following the basic rules uh, to protect themselves from COVID-19. But just from a, um authoritative uh, perspective, some of the measures that you're putting in place um, as local government to ensure that people are adhering to the rules, have we seen increased uh, um, 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 showing of police officers uh, what exactly is it that you are doing uh, to make sure that people are adhering uh, to the COVID-19 protocols I think that's what we, we have been doing you would see that we have been having joint forces uh, in terms of roadblocks and also in terms of inspections of our malls to make sure that people comply the problem here is uh, for instance if it, it's, it's not necessary a crime not to wear a mask then you limit the powers of police. We can warn you and say, well, wear a mask. You, you can't be arrested and be charged uh, with a criminal offense of not wearing a mask to say you are deliberately spreading the virus if you are infected and you might not even know that you're infected. Until such time, we come up with such tough uh, uh, measures so that we empower the very same law enforcement agents. The only thing that we can do, as I've indicated, is to just go and talk to them. For instance, the issue of respecting the curfews. Uh, when we we in our hospitals at two in the morning, somebody come with a drunken stab wound. After suturing that person, ordinarily for me, my belief was call the police and arrest these people. And we're doing that. But the police are saying, is it a criminal charge to find somebody walking around after uh, 22 hours? You can't charge that person with a with a criminal yes. uh, uh, offence. Yeah, Amy, I'm glad. glad I, I'm glad you bring up the issue of hospitals, and we've run out of time. But I must ask you: with the spike that you have seen in Limpopo, are the health facilities ready to accommodate patients? You know, I've always emphasized this: that there will never be any health system in the world 
which can cope unless the citizens do their part. We have done our part based on the estimations uh, that our scientists continuously tell us. With our first wave, we've been able to win, uh, uh, given the estimations, and we had very low infection rate. Even this time around, we are still giving it to say if we have got a 5% attack rate as a province, how are we going to cope? We've already activated all our response team. If I can tell you that today, unfortunately, all our hospitals have, have admitted COVID patients because there's no hospital that doesn't have a COVID ward, even level one hospitals. But however, I must also emphasize and indicate that we can have all those ICU beds and, and ventilators and even high flow oxygen uh, equipment that we did procure as a province in preparation of this uh, first wave and also this second, uh, the, this resurgence. However, do we still have the warm bodies that are psychologically prepared? Do we still have those nurses and doctors with that oomph? Because these are people whom I'm, I've always emphasized from March when people went on level five lockdown, just like me and you, because you have been on duty as a journalist and myself, they've never seen a break. If me and you are exhausted, what about them? Those who, were, who can't see patients virtually, maybe me and you sometimes can do our work virtually, these ones, you must be there on the monitoring, intubating patients, monitoring patients. So the challenge here will become the fatigue that our staff is having. The second challenge that I must also raise is the issue of road accidents in our province, which we have seen Minister Mbalula announcing that they've, uh, this year they've even increased compared to last year around this time in our province. Now, those have filled up some of our beds that we had freed already to say, let's prepare for COVID-19 resurgence. If you remember, end of November, we had a, a Litsima to call all our surgeons from all over the, the country who wanted to join. Um, um, MEC, unfortunately, we have run out of time, but your insights there, uh, we have heard very clearly. That is uh, MEC uh, for Health in Limpopo, uh, Popi Rama Tuba.